Hey church family, uh, very frustrating this week. We are not only in isolation, but I have COVID. Um, it's a messy time, a very messy time for us all uh, the last few years, as well as the current situation of people in and out with COVID, uh, isolating, uh, let alone other sicknesses, uh, missing school, missing work, what have you. Uh, I just want to encourage you this week as we pray. Uh, it's just so essential that we come together as a church family. I'm shattered that I will not be able to be there uh, with you, but it really doesn't matter if I'm there or who's there or who's not there. If there's a big crowd or a small crowd, uh, if it's so-called appears spiritually powerful or not, because the point in times of messiness uh, point in, the point in times of crisis uh, is obedience uh, more than performance. It's obedience uh, more than looking at success on the outside. It's success uh, on the inside. I just want to read to you a scripture to help us understand this. It's Psalm 66 verse 10. I've been spending a lot of time in the Psalms the last few years. And it says, you have tested us, O God, you have purified us like silver. You captured us in your net and laid the burden of slavery on our backs. Then you put a leader over us. We went through fire and flood, but you brought us to a place of great abundance. In a messy time, in a crisis, it feels like this. It feels like there's a burden on our backs, like a slave. It feels unfair, it feels unjust. Uh, it feels like the leaders, the organizations we're involved in, uh, maybe and for some people, it feels like the church is a place that's difficult, uh, is a place that we don't have anywhere to move. Maybe our rights uh, feel like they've been uh, pushed back. We go through fire, we go through flood. <laughs> this crisis is one problem after the, after the other. When are we ever going to get a break? When are we ever going to get a wind? But God promises there in verse 12 that he will bring us into a place of great abundance. But I want to jump it back to verse 10. This is why we're praying this is why we should pray personally in our personal place of prayer, which we've been discussing in the Return to Prayer series. This is why we're praying this week as a church family together as one, because in the crisis, God refines us like silver. The work that God is doing right now in you, in me, in us, in the body of Christ, in the church, even right across the globe, it's an inner work. It's an inner formation. In the times of crisis, you can either run because the outer is in pain. You can run uh, because your insides are in pain, your heart is broken, or you can walk through, trudge through the mess, wade through the troubles, trust God in the crisis. And what will happen if you trust God through the crisis is that God will shape you and form you on the inside. And greater is the character in one's heart than the gifting on the outside, the words that someone can speak, the charisma, than someone has. We've all seen a lot of leaders uh, over the last years uh, in the church across the world uh, that have appeared to have many giftings on the outside, but eventually what is on the inside comes to the outside and it can take out even the seemingly greatest leader. Character formation is worth far more than any kind of worldly success, any kind of outer success. And this is what God is doing. So wade through the mess let God form you in the place of prayer, form you in your small group, form you with your friends and your family in the conversations, crossing the line, speaking the truth in love. Let the word of God be the thing that corrects you and rebukes you and aligns you and refines you. This is the whole purpose of following Jesus. It's the constant opportunity through the trials, the injustices and the suffering of life to become more like Christ. To follow Christ means to take the crisis as an opportunity to again be formed into the image of Christ, to be refined and to be purified like silver again and again and again. So I hope that encourages you this week. I hope that encourages you to get to prayer. It's not about who's at prayer or who's not at prayer. It's the fact that God has asked us to pray. He's working deep within the heart of Southern Lights, our church during this time. He's working deep within the soul of our church. The work he's doing at the moment is not an outer work. It's not about numbers or events or conferences. He's doing an inner work. It's invisible. It's silent. It's not seen by many. Not many can even endure the inner work. Not many will even uh, survive the pruning, but God is doing a deep work in the deep recesses of our heart, deep, deep down, getting us ready for who he wants us to be as a church in the future. And that's why we're praying 
this Wednesday night. I hope as many of you can be there as possible to fight the good fight and be on the front lines of the spiritual battle as we pray together. I'll be with you in heart and soul. I'm with you every day praying for you, praying for God's grace, praying that God will uh, what what form you and work in you. I want nothing more as a pastor than your character to become like the character of Christ. Your gifts and your things you do at work and the money that you have or the other things you do, I'm so happy for you. But more than anything, I want you to be formed in your inner life. That's the fruit that I want to see in the people in my congregation. Bless you. Have a great night of prayer. <music>